This is the fifth section of chapter two on centers of mass of plane figures. And here we're going to be looking at finding the center of mass of a framework. So first of all, uh, what is a framework? Well, a framework is a wire or a series of wires bent or formed into a shape. So imagine you've got like a piece of wire, stiff wire, and you bent it into, I don't know, like a shape like this. Yeah. And what we want to do is we want to be able to find the center of mass of this framework, of this wire framework. Now, since we're going to be dealing with um, wire, which is uniform in its mass, we're going to take the length of the wire as its mass when we do the sum of MX over the sum of M. So M here is going to represent the length of each piece of wire and the center of the wire is going to represent the center of the mass of each piece of the wire so um, we'll just put here center of mass and just like the uh, composite laminars uh, we calculate each piece of wire separately so we want the length and the center of mass or the center of wire of each piece of wire and then we're going to find the sum of those so the last thing we need to know is well how do we find the center of mass of a curved piece of wire like this so this is going to be the arc of a circle so we're just going to put dots in so this is not part of the wire this is just showing where the wire came from if we bent it around where is the center of that arc and just sort of mark that here and similar to the sector that we did before the center of mass is going to be along this line of symmetry here uh, we need to know these angles here which we'll call alpha and alpha will need to be in radians and we'll also need to know the uh, radius of um, we're in problems with radians and radius. This is with radians. Yeah, we'll need to know the radius of that arc. Here, we'll put that in here. And I can see I've spelled radians completely wrong. I'm trying to talk about radians and say radius and get com completely confused well anyway the center of mass is going to be the distance from the center of the circle so center of mass is going to be uh, on the line of symmetry that red dotted line at a distance of Uh, R sine alpha over alpha from the center of the circle from that green dot. So this is the only extra formula that you need. The others are just going to be straight lines, so that's going to be easy to do. But if you've got a curved piece of wire in a framework, make sure that we've got um, the angle or half the angle that would be at the center here. That needs to be in radians and the center of mass is a distance of r sine alpha over alpha from the center here from the center of where the center of that arc circle would be example 14 a framework consists of a uniform length of wire which has been bent into the shape of letter l as shown find the distance of the center of mass of the framework from a b so a b is down here and AF right so then it makes sense to have our origin point at A so origin would be here okay so to help me keep things organized I'm putting everything in the table you don't need to uh, but I just find it useful so in the first column um, I'm just listing the different wires that I have so the letters that make that wire uh, in the second column um, what I'm using for M, its mass 
is the length of the wire. So I just need to write down those lengths. So we'll do that now. So AB is four, BC is one, CD, well, that must be two because that bit's two. So CD two, D to E is five, E to F two, and then A to F or F to A is six. Okay, so they're what I'm gonna be using for M. And then for X and Y, these are going to be like the X positions and the Y positions of the center of mass, which is going to be basically where the center of the Y is going to be. OK, now I've just put this onto a coordinate grid uh, just to make it a little bit easier to find those X and Y values. So starting with AB, its center of mass is the center of wire, which is going to be two across and with a Y coordinate of zero. Then B to C, the center of mass is going to be halfway up. So it's going to be at an X coordinate of four and a Y coordinate of a half or 0 0.5. C to D, its uh, center of mass is going to be halfway between two and four. So it's going to be at the coordinate three, one. I'll just put that on. D to E, so that's going to be halfway up. And actually what might be useful is maybe just to put a dot where the center of masses are so that you know we don't um, get confused and and miss things out so yeah we're on de now so this one so it's going to be halfway up so it's going to be at an x coordinate of two now if it's 2.5 up we need to be careful it's 2.5 up from one yeah because the wire starts at one so 2.5 up is going to be 3.5, or you could say it's 2.5 down, halfway of this 5, down from 6. So either way, we're going to get 3.5. So be careful not to put 2.5 down. So that would be at coordinate 2, 3.5. Then E to F, which is here. So that will be halfway across. So that will be at a coordinate 1 two sorry one six one six and lastly a to f so that's just going to be halfway up so that's going to be a coordinate zero three so just be a little bit careful working out those coordinates so first of all we'll start at finding a distance of center mass from a b okay that's going to be how far up so that's going to be y bar so distance from a b which is on the uh, x axis, so we're working out y bar. So, y bar, so here our mass now becomes the length of the wire multiplied by its center of mass divided by the total of all the lengths, the total of masses. So, that's going to be 4 times 0 plus 1 times by 0 0.5 plus 2 times by 1 plus 5 times by 3.5 plus 2 times 6 plus 6 times 3 divided by the sum of the masses so 4 plus 1 plus 2 plus 5 plus 2 plus 6 and that gives a value of 5 over 2 or 2.5 um now we're not given any units for these lengths, so they could be centimeters, we don't know. So we'll just leave it as 2.5 as the distance from AB. Then we want to find the distance from AF. So if we're finding the distance from AF, which is along the Y axis, we want to work out how far across it is. Um, so we are working out X bar. So X bar, is going to equal each mass times by center of mass on center of wire in the x direction so four times by two plus one times four plus two times three plus five times two plus two times one plus six times zero divided by the sum of the masses again which is going to be at four plus one plus two plus five plus two plus six so I just need to correct something. It wasn't six times by three. I multiplied the six by the y value, it should have been the x value. So six times by zero. 
and that gives me a value of 3 over 2 which is 1.5 so that's going to be my distance in the x direction or the distance from a f once i had the right calculation so do watch out for things like that even i make mistakes example 15 find the position of the center of mass of a framework constructed from a uniform piece of wire bent into the shape shown this shape here where the wire bcd is a semicircle center o with radius three centimeters and wire B A E D form three sides of a rectangle A B D E A B D E. Okay, now um, since this is symmetrical, we can use symmetry to work out the uh, center mass. So we know it's going to be along this line of symmetry. Now I'm actually going to do the calculation, but we are expecting y bar to be zero. But I'm, I'm going to do the calculation anyway. Um, but we're going to put in the x and y axis so it, it makes sense to put the uh, origin where they've marked o so we'll just mark these in here like this i'm going to put little red dots where i know the center of masses of the straight pieces of wire are and then to find the center of mass of the arc I'm going to be using R sine alpha over alpha, where alpha is equal to half of this angle here. So that will be pi over 2. So alpha is going to be pi over 2. So now I want to just put everything into a table. Right, so here's my table. Let's start with the lengths. So AB is a length 2, AE is length 6. ED is length 2 and arc BCD well that's just going to be half of the circumference so half of pi D so that just works out to be 3 pi then we're going to work out the X and Y position of all the centers of mass here so we'll start with um, AB now this will be a negative X value now since this is length of two, so it'll be negative one and three up. So negative one, three. For AE, that will be um, negative two, zero. Negative two, zero. And for ED, that'll be along here. So that'll be negative one, negative three. So negative one, negative three. Now we need to work out the center of mass of the curved y here and remember this gives you this formula gives you the distance from the center so that's going to be an x value it's going to be a distance from here so uh, we just need to use the formula radius 3 I'll just put it here so it'll be three times the sine of uh, pi over 2 divided by pi over 2. Now unfortunately you may have a calculator or mine does doesn't give you an exact answer uh, it gives you a decimal so it may be better to actually work out manually the top of this fraction is going to be 3 so 3 divided by pi over 2 and that gives 6 over pi so I don't know if the CG50 gives you the exact answer but Definitely on the FX991EX, the class with calculator, you get a decimal. We really want to be working with exact uh, values where we can. So that's going to be how far from the center, which happens to be how far from the origin. So we don't need to make any adjustments to this. So it's along this line. Uh, so it's going to be a Y value of zero. So now we're going to work out X bar, basically how far along the center of mass uh, the center of the line of symmetry is now we are going to work out y bar but we can see from symmetry that it's going to be zero but we're just going to work it out just to check but we'll start with x bar so take each length times it by the position of the center of mass so two times by negative one six times by negative two 
um, 2 times by negative 1 a little space here and we're going to add to that let's just draw on a diagram here uh, 3 pi times by 6 over pi so you, here you can see the advantage of using exact values because those pi's are going to cancel out aren't they divided by the sum of the lengths sum of the masses 2 plus 6 plus 2 plus 3 pi so we get 2 at the top over 10 plus 3 pi so we'll leave it in terms of pi now we know y bar is 0 but let's just double check and work it out so we'll have 2 times by 3 uh, plus 6 times 0 plus 2 times by negative 3 so there you can see the 6 and the minus 6 making it 0 the sum of the mass it doesn't really matter because it's just going to be 0 so as we expect um, y bar is equal to 0 so we can write down that the center of mass is 2 over 10 plus 3 pi centimeters to the right of O to the right of O on the line of symmetry OC or on the x-axis so you should now be able to do exercise 2e on pages 56 to 58 of the textbook